Hey everybody, this is No Bones About Wrestling, and I'm your host Asa. I'm here with Kay Fabulous. Hey. And this is CM Punk and Friends. No, That's this not is what it's called. It's AEW Collision. And this is from the July 1st edition of the show. It was taped June 29th in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. CM Punk and Friends. So let's get right to it, huh? I think I like that name better than Collision. CM Punk and Friends? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we'll call it for now. A little hearts around it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We have little uh, snippets of promos to start out, which I, I liked. Powerhouse Hobbs says he's going to beat Dustin Rhodes. Dustin answers him. Uh, Roderick Strong says he's going to beat Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe says Roderick Strong will be found wanting. And then we get the uh, intro with Elton John, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting, which I love that. I love the intro, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just great. Whoever decided on that was great the song fits it's well edited it's a nice beginning uh our first match is a non-title match uh with our world champion mjf he's facing kip morst so (laughs) why'd you say his last name like that i just emphasizing it so they can hear all the consonants yeah Morst. Uh, Heat Seeker. Two count. MJF gets up off of the pin. MJF puts on a label lock and Morst taps out slowly. My question, if that's the amount of fight he was going to put up, why did Morst even show up for this match? My question is, why did he tap out like that? He tapped out. He tapped like out. He was in, yeah. Like he was like... It was just so nonchalant, like lackadaisical tapping. Yeah. I don't, I've never seen anyone tap out like that. No. And if that's the one thing you're going to get to do during your match on television, wouldn't you do it with like vigor? Yeah. Like that's your moment to shine. That's the one thing you get to do during this world title championship bout, you know? If it hurts, you need to make it look like it hurts. Yeah, he looked like he was like, eh, like shooing a fly. Yeah. Not good. Like, how can you have two moves done to you and still I can say your performance sucks? Kit yeah. Morse, your performance sucked. Yeah. Uh, MJF gets on the mic, says, uh, well, that match was short. Talks down Hamilton, Ontario. Says that he's going to put his world title on the line against anyone from Hamilton. And then uh, this big guy walks out from the back and MJF is mocking him talking about how he's fat and he's a tub of goo and this and that and then (laughs) Ethan Page walks out and he's gonna take the shot and Ethan Page says he's from uh, Hamilton he details his father's life says how his father worked for some company and how his, his father didn't settle for the bare minimum and he went on to run several companies and Ethan Page says he's not going to settle for the bare minimum either and how MJF is the champion of the company but Ethan Page actually champions the company I thought that was a good line it was and he says you know how he's the man they don't call MJF when they need something who do they call when they need something they call Ethan Page when they need promotion less than a day in advance they call Ethan Page and he says you know, his wife wanted to know, well, when are you going to get paid back for this? And he says, well, it's going to happen right now because I'm getting my world title match. And we get a world title match yeah, right on, awesome. on Collision. We uh, got we got a note that, like, this promo by Ethan Page was, oh, it was excellent. Yeah, it was, it was very good. Like, very good. I felt like he can hang on the mic with MJF. Yeah. Which is great. We need to see more of that. Like, why do you have this gift in your company and you're not utilizing it? Mm Mm-hmm. No, yeah, he he delivered, that's for sure. Uh, So we get a world title match right here on CM Punk and Friends. (laughs) And Ethan goes for 
The Ego's Edge, no. MJF throws Page up uh, into the turnbuckle. Page balances on his head. Super kick by MJF knocks him down. Puts Page in a single leg crab. Page breaks the hold. MJF tries the heat seeker. Ends up getting tossed outside. MJF chokes Page on the ropes for a four count. And he comes up smirking, does MJF. Page comes in with a diamond cutter on MJF. Hurricane Rana by Page. Snap power slam by Page. He's kind of get it, getting it going. Another diamond cutter by Page on MJF. Page goes to the top, gets knocked down. But Page gathers up the world champion and comes off with a middle rope power slam. He again goes for his finisher. He goes edge, but his left knee gives out, which MJF had been working on throughout the match. MJF hits a dragon screw to capitalize on this knee injury, then hits a heat seeker, gets the pin and the win. MJF wins and retains his world title. Good match. I give it three and a half bones out of five. Kay, what do you have to say about our surprise world title match? Well, I thought it was super cool that, like, the biggest match of Ethan Page's career got to happen in his hometown. Mm-hmm. I, love, yeah, yeah. I love when they do hometown matches, you know? Um, I know they can't do that, like, everywhere, because obviously not everyone's from everywhere. Uh, but I, I thought it was a nice... Nice reward for Ethan Page for all the work he does do. Because, I mean, he does a lot of promotion for the company. Like, I know that was part of his promo, but, like, it's actually true. Um, And so that was cool. Uh, I also think it's worth noting that MJF did not cheat to win this match. And that's, like, the first match I can't remember the last. Another one. Aside from his win over Kip Morst, I can't remember the last (laughs) time that he didn't uh, cheat to win. Yeah, like in a in a real match, a non squash match. Uh, yeah, uh, and I'm just really glad that we got a real MJF match because when we saw Kip Morst, I was like, oh, what's the point of having the freaking champion on your show if this is all you're gonna give us? Mm-hmm. And so it was a very nice surprise. I think it was a a nice a nice plug or push for for Collision because. MJF doesn't have that many matches on Dynamite, you know? So for him to have a match on Collision, I think, is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially a surprise match, because then it's like, oh, I should tune in next week in case there's another surprise big match, you know? Mm -hmm. Smart, smart uh, publicity move. Mm -hmm. Uh, But as far as the match goes, I thought thought it was really good. Um, Most of my notes are from Ethan Page's perspective, or from his his, uh, side of the match. Uh, He had a good cutter. Um... Middle middle of the rope power slam, uh, and I liked that that they really focused or MJF really focused on the left leg, and that Ethan Page did a good job selling it and having it like affect his moves. Um, I guess I can talk about this when we get to the Ricky Stark match. But do you think they need to plan? Well, I guess I'm talking about it now. Do you think they need to plan like throughout the night's booking? Okay, you're going to have a leg injury. You're going to have an arm injury. Because we had two leg injuries that, like, pretty heavily impacted the results of the match in the same night of wrestling. Um, So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you need to spread those kind of things out and so so the fans don't feel like they're watching the same match. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Yeah. That's it. I just thought it was worth, worth noting. Yeah. That's for sure. The dragon screw. Uh, so that's one of those awesome. things where the head booker should have checked with the road agents, or the road mm-hmm. agents should have checked with one another to make sure they weren't planning a similar exactly. Similar match. Yes, that's just my opinion mm-hmm. on it. Well, yeah, no, that I mean I was asking for your opinion. But yeah, you don't want to feel like you're watching the same match. Oh, his legs hurting. Mm-hmm. Oh, his legs hurting. Yeah. You don't want to feel like you're watching the same match on mm-hmm. the on the same night when yeah. it, you can easily just change it to an arm. Yeah, and it was the same leg. Yeah. 
That's that's my opinion on it. Yeah, it's it's an easy thing to keep track of and and not double up on. So why not keep track of it and not double up on it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, good match, surprise, uh, title shot for Ethan Page, and he's not able to capitalize on it. Uh, of course, his contract is currently owned by the Hardys. The Hardys and Brother Zay, nowhere to be seen. This was all uh, Ethan Page, just Canadian Ethan Page getting some hometown heat. Uh, the Hardys not involved in any way. Up next, we have uh, an Owen Hart Cup tournament quarterfinal. So we had several tonight. So the tournament bracket, uh, the way it's looking, we have CM Punk in the semifinals. He will face the winner of Samoa Joe versus Roderick Strong. That is tonight's main event. And then in the other quarterfinals, we have Dustin Rhodes versus Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks versus Juice Robinson. So let's get right to the quarterfinal, the first quarterfinal of the evening. The natural Dustin Rhodes versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Hobbs accompanied by QT Marshall and Harley Cameron. Harley Cameron who sang uh, sang them in uh, to the building and set out the red carpet for herself, Hobbs and Marshall. Very good entrance. It was great. I love it. It was great. It was a nice touch. Yeah. Very nice. And it never hurts seeing Miss Cameron either. Mm-hmm. Dustin <laughs> has the upper hand to start with. Then he gets knocked outside. QT Marshall grabs Dustin, throws him against the ring post, and very soon into this match, Dustin gets some color. He is bleeding. Hobbs punches his forehead to, of course, open up the cup more. And then he wipes Dustin's blood all over his chest. I feel like I need to send AEW workers the Bloodborne Pathogens video that the school system makes me watch literally every year about how you're not supposed to touch blood that belongs to other people and why. Because I feel like they they need to be informed. Why don't you share it with us. Well, I mean, there's just a lot of a lot of diseases that are. I don't. I'm not gonna do like the, It's like a 20 minute video. Um, but it goes over the proper handling of blood, what to do if you come in contact with blood, mm. and then the proper safety equipment used to clean up blood. See, the refs look like they've seen or had some kind of training because they at least pull out some gloves. But so you're just saying like, you think the wrestlers need to carry gloves with them? Is that what you're saying? No, I think it's just super gross. That's what I'm saying. It's part of wrestling. Like, do they get tested? Ever or often? Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge, no. They're like, I mean, they didn't do it on this show, but like one of the matches this past I mean, they certainly should after they come in contact with, I mean, you're right. No jokes aside. Yeah. They certainly should. Like, it wasn't this week, uh, but last week, I think, someone licked someone's blood off of them. Like, who was that? Someone licked their bicep. Yeah, it was gross. There was blood on their bicep and they licked it. I forget who that was. Was that? No, it wasn't WWE. No, no, that was well, AEW. No, yeah, of course it was AEW. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, so back to the match. Uh, Hobbs wipes Dustin's blood all over his chest. Dustin ends up hitting a crossroads, and then a pile driver gets a two count out of it. Uh, hits a code red, gets a two count out of that. Dustin is on a roll. He's looking pretty good in this match, and has total control over Hobbs. Marshall distracts Rhodes, and then Hobbs avalanches him in the corner. Then hits a spine buster. Just a one count, Dustin pops back up. He is, he has some life to him tonight, which is a good thing, because he's about the only person in the building. This fucking crowd, I tell you, yeah, this Hamilton crowd, they were pathetic. Yeah. It was like a WWE crowd, but worse. Yeah, it was it was very bad. The crowd was dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were there for entrances, barely. But, I mean, for during matches... It was very consistent, too. Like, consistently dead. Yeah, they were sitting on their hands. But, you know, very few fans cheering for anything yeah. that was happening. Just like, why'd you even come to the matches? What It mm-hmm. was... It was 
it was not good. Didn't come across well on television no, at all. No. It, it was not good for AEW. I hate to say that. And one thing we talked about this obviously before, uh, while we were actually watching the show. Um, do you think that Ring of Honor is too long to put before a taping? Of I absolutely Collision? do. Yes. I think that might be part of it. Like, if the, especially if like. I mean, we don't know what Ring of Honor was taped prior to this, but I mean, sometimes usually there's ten matches on Ring of Honor. That was yeah. when we were watching it regularly. That was the average was ten matches, and if if those matches are using up all your energy before your live televised show, like I don't want to say don't tape Ring of Honor before Collision because selfishly we're going to Collision and I want to see a taping of Ring of Honor, but I mean, we went and saw Raw and. Three hours of cheering for wrestling is tiring. And so if you have a two-hour Ring of Honor show and then a two-hour collision show, you can't keep that energy up well, for Raw four was hours. More than, it was about three and a half hours. Oh, because they had taped, main event. They taped main event before yeah. Raw was live. Yeah. So about three and a half hours. And, I mean, we talked about how, like, we're, obviously, we do a wrestling podcast. We're huge wrestling fans. Like, we had a hard time keeping our energy up throughout all of Raw, you know? And so, for fans that aren't necessarily as diehard as we are, like, I could see getting tired at, by the fourth hour of yeah, wrestling. Yeah, but, no, I mean, you know, ask me, an ideal wrestling card is about ten matches. Mm-hmm. No more. Yeah. Anything more, and you start to get... It's it's too much. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what level of wrestling we're talking about. Doesn't matter whether we're talking about men or women or little people wrestling. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Ten matches is about the sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't matter what kind of matches we're talking about. I'm telling you, ten matches is about the sweet spot. You get more, you're going to start losing the crowd. Yeah. Uh and so, yeah, for them to be taping Ring of Honor and then doing uh, Collision, which is what uh, what they've been doing, is just insane. I mean, to be taping a two-hour TV show and then doing a live two-hour TV show, that's just crazy. I mean, it's a good bang for your buck for the ticket price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, just as far as the crowd... Uh, the crowd's energy it's it's asking a, a lot from the crowd mm-hmm. uh to to be into four hours of wrestling four hours is a long goddamn time i mean that's longer mm-hmm. than a than a pay-per-view it's longer than a movie well of course yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean you know we're talking about you know four hours the only thing that should really exceed that is like wrestlemania mm-hmm. you know we expect that. Yeah. Uh, and even that gets a bit long. Mm-hmm. But, but we expect WrestleMania to be long. But that's about it. That's the only thing that should exceed, you know, three, three and a half hours, really, if you ask me, is WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just too much. Just, And like I said, I'm glad. I mean, for the ticket price, fuck, it, I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. Personally, I am fine with it. Yeah. I'm fine with going and seeing two wrestling TV shows. It'll be fine with me. Yeah, I'm super psyched about it. But... Yeah, seeing Ring of Honor taping mm-hmm. and a live collision. Yeah. I'm totally fine with it. But I'm talking about most fans. Yeah. That's too much wrestling. Mm-hmm. And we'll see. It may even be for me. I mean, by the time it's time to go, I'm sure I'll be ready to go. Yeah. You know. Um, I'm so excited for Ring of Honor. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's too much. It's too yeah. much. So this crowd, it, well, I guess we won't, we won't be seeing Ring of Honor. It'll be interesting to see uh, how they came across. Were they live for Ring of Honor and then mm-hmm. died for, for the collision taping? I don't know. Um, I, I, think, I think they taped Ring of Honor with this crowd and then and then taped collision also. Most of so. the time, that we like when we were watching Ring of Honor... We noticed that when they taped it before an AEW show, instead of, like, just doing a Ring of Honor taping, the crowd sucked, Yeah, you know? So, yeah. like, this crowd might have just sucked the whole time. Yeah, but this crowd sucked. Yeah. But yeah, back to the match. We were in the middle of Dustin oh, Rhodes 
<laughs> That's okay. I started the aside. Uh, I was talking about how Dustin Rhodes had energy and the crowd did not. It just made mm -hmm. me think about it. Because uh, the crowd should have been all into this match. You got old man Dustin Rhodes uh, getting getting all over Powerhouse Hobbs. And the crowd um, should have been into this. And they were not. You started to bring up that Dustin actually knew Owen Hart. And then you, you interrupted yourself with your aside about the crowd. I was not saying that. But um, that is a point I was going to bring up. Oh, is... Um, yeah, yeah. So it would have been nice to give Dustin a win in this tournament. Someone who actually knew Owen Hart, give him a win, or maybe even let him get get to the finals because he dedicated this match to Owen Hart. You know, Owen was beloved. You can't find anybody to have have a bad word about Owen Hart. Cannot. He was beloved by the wrestlers, and he was known as a good man, a family man, family man above all else. He was also known to be very cheap on the road. Not in a bad way, but just like, if he could save a buck on a hotel room, he was going to save a buck. He wasn't going to spend. He wasn't one to go out and waste all of his money drinking. He didn't do drugs. Um, what he was best known for, apart from being cheap, was practical jokes. He was the biggest practical joker. Uh, and I'm not going to share stories. We have other stuff to do, but just look some up. Google some Owen Hart pranks, and there's some pretty good ones. Uh, but he's known as pretty much the, like the king of wrestling practical jokers. He loved pulling a practical joke on people, and that was, I think, one of the biggest things the wrestlers missed when when he tragically died. And now we'll get back to this match. Uh, like I said, the crowd should have been into this because Dustin was all over Hobbs, but uh, Dustin uh, kicks out of a spine buster, one count. Dustin power slams Hobbs, pins him, gets a two count. Uh, referees distracted. QT Marshall punches Rhodes. Hobbs hits another spine buster, and pretty much out of nowhere, Hobbs didn't get much in this match at all. But pretty much out of nowhere, Hobbs gets the spine buster, gets the pin, and the win. Good match, entertaining match in this tournament. I give it four bones out of five. And uh, believe it or not, this was my match of the night. Dustin Rhodes versus Powerhouse Hobbs. I quite enjoyed it. This is also my match of the night. I really? enjoyed it too. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So uh, you got Powerhouse Hobbs advancing to the quarterfinal to face uh, the winner of, I'm trying to think who he faces the winner of. He faces the winner of Ricky Starks versus Juice Robinson. Thank you, yes, yep. Uh, next, we have uh, Roderick Strong and Samoa Joe promo video package, a short video package. And then we have Miro versus Anthony Henry of the Work Horseman. If you watch Ring of Honor, he's on there quite a bit. Um, this is Miro's second match back. Uh, Miro stomps him down to begin with. Irish whip and uh, overhead toss. Gut wrench suplex by Miro. Miro. Ten beats to Henry's chest. Uh, catches two kicks. A flying stomp and some more kicks and strikes from Henry. A little offense from Henry. Miro then hits a super kick and applies game over for the quick submission. This was a squash match. I don't I don't rate squash matches. Miro is now 2-0 and on his comeback trail since he has renounced not only God, but he has also renounced his wife. <laughs> uh, and he is undefeated in his... Return to AEW. Up next, Tony Schiavone brings out Bullet Club Gold. And it is official. They have t-shirts on. Uh, the guns are part of Bullet Club Gold. So we've got Jay White, Juice Robinson, Austin Gunn, and Colton Gunn. And Bullet Club Gold is growing. And I would I would expect to see more members as well. Uh, Switchblade Jay White really is great in this segment. Uh, Jay White talks about Bullet Club Gold. Uh, the Guns have some mic time. They discuss 
why they were chosen, about how they're rising stars, about how they've beaten the acclaimed, they've beaten FTR, etc. They, you know, they said, you know, you have a favorite team, we've beaten them. Uh, Switchblade Jay White gets back on the mic, and he challenges FTR for their world tag team titles. He wants FTR versus he and Juice Robinson. Uh, Shivani announces that Bullet Club Gold members are barred from ringside for the Robinson versus Starks Owen Hart quarterfinal match. And Jay White is like, who, who, who did this? Is it you, Shivani? Did you make this decision? And he grabs Mike and he's like, watch him. And Jay White also takes this time to address CM Punk. It's CM Punk's show, after all. And he he tells CM Punk, he says, that if what was in his red bag the other week was his AEW world title belt, then he should just keep it in the bag. Which was puzzling, because you thought Jay White was about to say, you know, then I want it, I want a shot at it. But it, it's not the way he went. He just told him to keep it in the bag. So that was it was odd. Why even bring it up if you're going to tell him to keep it in the bag? Yeah. It was odd. I didn't get that. I didn't get it either. I didn't get that at all. Uh, But this segment came across well. Uh, It was nice to see Bullet Club Gold together to show that the guns are part of it. Uh, It was nice to get a little mic time for the guns. The crowd actually seemed to be into this a little. One of the few things the crowd was into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, and Jay White was really great. Oh, you can yeah. see he, why, you know, I, we don't watch Japanese wrestling. Nothing against it. We just don't have time. Uh, and so you could really see why so many people were so high on Jay White, why they thought he was such a big deal coming into uh either AEW or WWE Mm -hmm. upon leaving Japan because the guy has it in the ring and he has it on the mic. He's one of the best mic men in the, in the U S I mean, immediately one Mm -hmm. of the top 10, no doubt. He is so smooth on the mic and as a heel and I can see him working as a face just as well, but Mm -hmm. he is a great heel, just a smooth, slick piece of shit Mm -hmm. heel, you know? Yeah. It, just a great job by Jay White. Uh, up next, uh, the opposing faction. That's the way we've kind of got it going. Is CM Punk's faction set up to oppose Bullet Club Gold? That feels like the way we're we're headed here on this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, they announced that they were going to go after FTR's tag belts. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, I think that's definitely where it's going. Uh, so we have CM Punk, FTR, and Ricky Starks, and these guys have been running together for a couple weeks, and they're getting interviewed. Uh, CM Punk claims that MJF's belt is a replica from Shop AEW, hmm. and CM Punk has his red bag. He has not revealed what's in it, but again, pretty much everyone believes it is his AEW world title belt. He gave Ricky Starks a peek in the bag. Did you notice that? I did not notice yeah, that. Yeah, he opened the bag and like leaned over and let Ricky Starks peek in the bag. So he did say it, it's what he held over his head. I mean, it's definitely it's the, the belt. world title yeah, it's belt. The world title yeah. belt. Yeah. Um, FTR says the guns are shooting blanks, and Starks said, "I've already beaten Juice Robinson. I'm getting another win." So let's head to the Owen Hart Cup quarterfinal match where the winner faces Powerhouse Hobbs in the semifinals. We have Ricky Starks versus Juice Robinson. Uh, Right off of the bat, uh, Starks trips over Juice Robinson and runs into the ropes face first. Ran right into the middle rope. That looked painful. He's going to have a black eye, maybe. Very possibly. The two exchange some punches. Uh, Starks' knee appears injured. Uh, That's what we were talking about. Juice Robinson takes some time to fill up his spirit meter with some taunts. Senton by Juice, then a chokehold applied. Ref chokes for Starks' consciousness. Ricky gets up 
Juice stays in control of the match. A cannonball in the corner by Juice Robinson. And I'm not big on the announcer, Kevin Kelly. I'm not a fan. But he does the cannonball, does does Robinson. And Kevin Kelly says, cannonball coming. Which is a Caddyshack reference, of course. So I like that. That was my one point where I liked Kevin Kelly this week. Uh, Starks hits a clothesline and a DDT coming back a little in the match until Juice Robinson slaps on a Texas Cloverleaf hold. Juice hooks Ricky's tights for a two-count pin. Juice went for a hurricane runner off the top, but Ricky held on, and Juice fell to the canvas. Spear by Starks. Roll up by Starks. Pin and a quick win. Ricky Starks advances to the semifinals. Pretty good match here. Three and a half bones out of five. Bullet Club Gold comes out as though they're going to try a beat down on Ricky Starks, but out come CM Punk and FTR to prevent it. So we're seeing these two factions, well, a loose faction with the faces, but we're seeing them head to head. Uh, I like it. I don't think it's that loose with the faces because they have CMFTR t shirts. CMFTR and Ricky. And Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> like in parentheses, you know. <laughs> Uh, Lexi asks Christian Cage, uh, who is with Luchasaurus, uh, she asks Christian Cage why he's holding the TNT Championship instead of Luchasaurus. Uh, so Sean Spears shows up. He addresses Luchasaurus. Uh, Christian tells Sean Spears, he says, you're not dangerous. And Sean Spears says, anyone can be dangerous. They just have to meet the right person. And Sean Spears wants to go after the TNT title. And Christian Cage told him there are no more open challenges. And he says, I know that. And so it wasn't really defined. Is he challenging him? Is he not? He didn't really put out a challenge. Yeah. And there was nothing made for if they're going to have a match. It was very uh, murky what was happening mm-hmm. in this segment. Uh Christian Cage came off as a dick, came off great, as always. Luchasaurus growls at the end, and Christian Cage kind of holds him back. So Luchasaurus came off great, as he was supposed to, but the segment itself was confusing. Confusing, Yeah, Yeah, confusing. Uh, Up next, uh, AEW TBS Championship match. The champion, Chris Statlander, defending against Lady Frost. Uh, We had a nice acrobatic sequence by Frost that led to nothing. Some pretty looking acrobatics, though. Uh, Statlander hits a suplex. Uh, Lady Frost wiggles around a bit and gets covered for a two count. Uh, Frost cartwheels over a prone Statlander and then drop kicks her right in the butt. Frost gets caught, but... Turns it into a Tornado DDT on Statlander. Statlander hits a discus clothesline later in the match and then hits the Saturday Night Fever, gets the pin and the win, retains the TBS championship. Uh, Decent match. There were some spots that were missed here. A little sloppy. Uh, three bones out of five. Frost is very good at gymnastics. Excuse me. She's very good at gymnastics, but she's not always the best at putting the gymnastics together into a good-looking wrestling match, which well is said. which is what we need. Yeah, I think that's... Chris Statlander looked good here. Mm-hmm. She looked very good. Yeah. Uh, what do you have to say about this one, Kay? It was a little clunky for me, which was unexpected. I've seen several Lady Frost matches and several Chris Statlander matches, and both of them are usually pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I was so expecting I, I, more from yeah, these two. I feel like they they just didn't have good communication or good chemistry. Like lots of like where you're supposed to grab the legs, but you missed, and so you got to like reach back to grab them again. You know, mm-hmm. it just lots of like little things like that there weren't like that huge, add up that yeah add no, up. they definitely added up there weren't like huge missed spots where it was like oh my god you know but just like lots of like little things that made you go like Ugh, like that um 
there's a good backbreaker from Chris Statlander on Frost early on after like she spun her around <laughs> her arm like a like a twirl and then and then went into a backbreaker. It was a cool move. I liked it. Um, I feel like that is an appropriate use of her gymnastic skills for like selling the like power of a move. Or I mean the one where she uh, she did like the cartwheel over over Statlander and then went into the backbreaker uh, or spine buster rather. Uh, that was good. Um, yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of gymnast to wrestler tran transitions. Like, a lot of people made that transition, you know? That's what WWE is doing, as I understand. In NXT, a lot of those women are gymnasts. Yeah. And, and as I understand, a lot of WWE's recent assignees are gymnasts mm -hmm. who they're trying to turn into wrestlers. Which, I mean, I think, I think it makes sense. But yeah. I think... Gymnastics can have a place in wrestling matches, but I think that they haven't found that place yet. You know, like, there are very few times where they do gymnastics moves where it makes sense for the match and where it comes across as believable. But some people can apply it very well. Look at, you know, Ray Phoenix. Look at yeah. Commander. I don't consider that gymnastics. I consider that more like acrobatics. I'm talking about like okay. cartwheels and like somersaults and shit, you know? Yeah. Um, I guess I'm mainly talking about women. Um, I got, okay. although, although we do have Jack cartwheel. Um, but yeah, well. I just, I just think about like, like Willow's cartwheel that she does in her matches, usually oh. like once per match where like pointless, pointless. Like, like you're, if you're adding it just for the sake of adding it, yeah. You're taken away from the match, you exactly, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I feel like there were a few times in this match with Lady Frost where that was the case, where it was kind of like, well, why is she doing that, you know? Um, yeah, because we're trying to make it a fight. And yeah. And there ain't too many times you're going to do a cartwheel in a fight. Unless you're doing a musical theater number that is a stage fight, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's very out of place. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, overall this match was okay. I was a little bit just—I was disappointed in it, you know, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, up next, we see Andrade El Idolo, and he says he's here for his mask. And he asks where the House of Black are with his mask. The House of Black, the trios champions, they have stolen his mask. And there's a monitor behind Andrade, and luckily they appear on the monitor behind him, and they tell him it's, uh, they tell him tranquilo, which means, you know, calm, and they say all in due time. Andrade is definitely not tranquilo. He kind of freaks out a bit, mm -hmm. and he's sh shouting about his mask, and, you know, the mask he wears out before uh, his matches, and he'll take it off. Uh, unlike uh, a lot of Mexican wrestlers who, you know, wear the mask the whole time. He, his is more of a ceremonial thing. He'll wear it out and then take it off before the match begins. Mm -hmm. um, but Andrade apparently really misses that mask and hates that the House of Black have it. And if this is leading to an Andrade-Malachi Black feud, then let's have it. Because, yeah. man, both of those guys can go. Well, his two matches so far have been against Buddy Matthews and then Brody King. Mm -hmm. So all we have left is Malachi Black for him to complete the trio, you know, mm -hmm. and I would love to see that. Oh, yeah. I saw them in NXT one time, and it they were fantastic. Oh, I bet. I mean, they're both so, so good and, uh, fantastic. together. I'm sure it's, like, magical. Um, so, yeah, Collision. And, again, we're seeing on Collision uh, the theme, No High Flyers. Mm -hmm. So that definitely, we're in week three of Collision, and it definitely is the No High Flyer show. Mm -hmm. It's the the ring wrestling kind of kind of brawler, uh, but you're you're in the ring. They're in, in high flying going on on Collision. Yeah. Uh, so we have some matches coming up. I'm going to go through them real quick uh, on Dynamite coming up. Uh, some matches in the blind draw, wink, wink, uh, tag team number one contender tournament, Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee versus uh, Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy, uh, world champion MJF and Adam Cole versus two opponents who have not been named, in the women's Owen Hart 
Cup quarterfinals. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, versus Ruby Soho of the Outcasts. John Moxley will have a promo on Dynamite. And Kenny Omega will face Wheeler Utah of the Blackpool Combat Club. We then get a brief Omega versus Utah video package. And then we get some matches for Collision for next week. Uh, CM Punk and Friends. Uh, FTR, the World Tag Team Champions, are facing Switchblade Jay White and J- uh, Juice Robinson in a World Tag Team Title Eliminator match, where if White and Robinson beat FTR, then they will earn a Tag Team Title shot. Uh, we also have, in the Owen Hart Cup semifinal, the women's bracket, uh, Ring of Honor World Champion Athena faces New Japan Strong Women's Champion Willow Nightingale. Uh, another Owen Hart Cup semifinal, Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Hobbs, and another Owen Hart Cup semifinal, CM Punk versus the winner of Roderick Strong and Samoa Joe, coming up in a minute here. And CM Punk comes out to guest commentate the main event. We have a mix of cheers and and boos but again the crowd not very in not the pop either way yeah. you get for CM Punk this crowd just is not not engaged not mm-hmm. making noise anyway they're not even clapping like if you look at the shots of the crowd yeah like it's not just that they're not cheering they're not even doing like a lazy golf clap they're just sitting there yeah like they're watching Weird. it on TV yeah it's very strange yeah I make more noise when I watch it on TV yeah it's, yeah, it, it's not, like I said, did not come across well on TV at all yeah, for yeah. AEW. I feel bad for AEW because yeah. this was a good show. Yeah, it wasn't their fault. Yeah, it was not their fault. No, it was the crowd's fault. Um, unless you want to blame them for putting on the Ring of Honor, yeah. then it could be their fault. But it wasn't the performer's fault, is my point, mm-hmm. is, is what I mean. Because there wasn't a bad match. The the women's match was a little sloppy, but otherwise the matches were good. Uh, you had two squash matches, which were pointless, uh, but otherwise the matches were good. Uh, so CM Punk comes out to guest commentate, and we have our main event, the, the final Owen Hart Cup quarterfinal in the men's bracket. Roderick Strong versus the Ring of Honor television champion Samoa Joe. And we have some chain wrestling to start. Strong drop kicks Joe on the outside through the ropes. Strong gets caught by Joe for the Uranagi. A quick two count. Joe takes control, wrenching Strong's neck. There's a rising knee strike by Strong. Sinton by Samoa Joe gets a two count off of that. Strong with several clotheslines. Joe won't go down. He drop kicks Joe down, gets a two count. Strong jumps at Joe in the corner, uh, gets a two. Olympic slam by Strong on Joe. Nice looking move, gets a two off of that. Uh, Strong went for something. I'm not sure what. Joe grabbed him in the Kirafuna clutch referee stoppage. Samoa Joe. Wins, advances to the semifinal, and next week we are getting CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. Yeah! Uh, I give this match three and a half bones out of five. Uh, Kay, would you like, before I say what happened after the match, would you like to add uh, anything about the match? Yeah, um, I love CM Punk, as you know. Mm Mm-hmm. And I love CM Punk both in the ring and on the mic. Mm -hmm. Uh... When he was in WWE, he got injured, and during the time of his recovery, they had him as a commentator, and it was some of my best, my favorite commentary in wrestling. Yeah, he was good here. Um, He was very good here. He was good here. I found it so distracting for him on the, for him to be on the mic, but not because of him, but because of how the other two announcers were engaging him in conversation. Instead of calling the match and discussing the match that was happening like four feet away from them, it was like they were conducting an in-depth interview of CM Punk and his like life story uh, or like his history with Joe and whatnot. And, right. and like while there's a place for that, it should be like sprinkled throughout 
while still calling the match that you're supposed to be calling. Like about halfway through, I was finally like, who the hell is supposed to be calling this? And then finally Kevin Kelly started saying things. But the match was half over at that point. Yeah, the announcers, one, weren't calling the match. Two, with their questions, were making it blatantly obvious that Strong didn't have a Mm -hmm. snowball's chance in hell of winning. Yeah, it was just, it was disappointing. Uh, it, it made for a limp main event, honestly. Yeah. Because it was obvious Strong had no chance. And, like, CM Punk is a good commentator, and they just, like, ran all over him with their questions that I feel like he didn't get a chance to get into any kind of rhythm with, with calling the match. It was just, it was frustrating as a viewer. He um, was good, though, in answering yeah. the questions. Yeah, no, he, he was, was yeah. Um, he's all, I mean, he's always, he's good with pretty much everything he does, so. Yeah, he's magic. I love him. Anyway, um, I was really, so the only other thing that I want to point out, uh, Strong did an Olympic slam on Joe crazy freaking impressive joe is huge joe's a big guy he is a very large man and so to be able to to do that on him i was like shocked like i'm still shocked Strong i mean i saw it up. and i'm like i don't believe that it happened even though i watched it happen you know like it's shocking strong lives up to his name yes he does he does uh after the match uh joe goes and gets a steel chair he heads over to cm punk at the commentator's table, Kevin Kelly cowards in fear. CM Punk grabs a chair and says, I got a chair too, buddy. So Joe is not coming after CM Punk. Joe goes back in the ring, puts the chair down in the ring, grabs Roderick Strong, hits a move. It's kind of, kind of like a sidewalk slam type thing, but, but puts Strong head first down onto the steel chair. And then they do a stretcher angle with Strong, which I, I will tell you this honestly. I'm not I'm not one who is. I mean, if you listen to our show, you know I'm not one who is always looking to get offended. I am rarely, if if ever, offended by anything. But I think it's in poor taste, or at least it's something to think about doing a stretcher angle in a tournament named after a man who got stretchered out of a wrestling ring. And then died. Was, when he was, yeah. Because he fell to his death and then got stretchered out of a wrestling ring. Maybe let's not do a stretcher angle in his tournament. I didn't even Maybe think let's, about that. Let's, we can have seven matches without doing a stretcher angle when everybody who watched that pay-per-view saw Owen Hart get stretchered out of that building out, get stretchered out of that ring maybe let's mm-hmm. not do a stretcher angle in, in the Owen Hart tournament I didn't even think about that I thought you were going with a let's stop doing a stretcher angle which I think is where you should have gone but like I didn't even think about the Owen Hart piece I just think it's in poor taste in general but especially I didn't it didn't occur to me with the Owen Hart thing but like in, in an industry where People have been paralyzed. I don't think it's in poor taste in general. No, it's no, it's just another way to play with people's emotions. Mm -hmm. That's what wrestling's all about. Yeah. No, it's not important. Here, it was in poor taste. Yes, definitely. I, I, when they did it, I could not believe it. I thought it was in in very poor taste, and obviously, they just didn't think about Mm -hmm. it. They just didn't think. Obviously. Yeah. Because if they had thought for a minute about it, they would have they would have thought better and i can it was the first thing i thought of when you're doing the owen hart cup the first mm-hmm. thing that i thought of was going back to seeing owen hart get stretchered mm-hmm. yeah and it's terrible I, I can't believe they didn't think about it i cannot believe it mm-hmm. i and especially tony khan as a longtime wrestling fan i can't believe that that didn't come into his head mm-hmm. I, I i can't believe it so, yeah, some poor tastes here, I thought. And yeah. it, it's rare of me to say that. I can vouch for that. It was rare for you to be offended by anything. Yes. And I was I was a little offended here. Yeah. 
And yeah, you you will you may never hear me say that again, listeners. You definitely have never heard me say it before. Uh, but I was a little I was a little offended by this, to be to be quite honest. Um. So. Uh, they do the stretcher angle. Adam Cole comes down. The EMTs wrap the straps around Roderick Strong like a Christmas present bow that can't be how they're supposed to be used. It it looked ridiculous. Uh, The show ends with a shot of CM Punk looking concerned. Of course, for Roderick Strong, but also concerned for his own well-being because he has to face this beast of a man, Samoa Joe, next week, this man who just stretchered out Roderick Strong. So, good build. Uh, So, CM Punk versus Samoa Joe, and Powerhouse Hobbs versus Ricky Starks next week in the semifinals of the Owen Hart Cup. Hopefully, no one gets stretchered out next week or no one gets lowered to the ring in a harness or any any other thing involved with Owen Hart's death maybe can be avoided for a couple matches sounds good um okay any final thoughts about collision you have no, I thought it was a good show. Um, Seeing Punk and Friends. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wish I wish they would stop doing squash matches. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. But other than that, that's really my only complaint. Um, other than the women's match not being very good this time. Um, but they at least had a women's match. Uh, I thought they did a good job giving some of their matches some good time. Like, I felt like, especially the, the Dustin... Hobbs match. I felt like it probably wasn't the longest match time wise, but it, it felt like they gave it the most time because of all that they did with it. You know, I think used their time well. Yeah, they used their time well. Yeah, and like I said, that was the match of the night, definitely, mm-hmm. just yeah. because of the the story. The story, absolutely. I mean, it's yeah. it's easy, and and AEW. I love AEW, but a lot of times they forego story. Um didn't happen here we had all the matches had story tonight but just just saying a, a lot of times they will forgo story uh to their own detriment uh, so it's something to i say a lot of times sometimes they forego story to their own detriment and it's just something they need to watch out for um but yeah the roads you know dustin trying to uh, win one for his deceased friend, taking on this monster, this merciless monster, Powerhouse Hobbs. Great, great storyline. And mm-hmm. then especially Dustin bleeding just adds to it. You know, blood adds to a wrestling match. Like it or not, like the blood or not, it adds to the match. I that, I feel. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely the match of the night. Some Some good emotion there. Uh, some nice emotion in the MJF Ethan Page match. Definitely mm-hmm. had me going for Ethan Page to win the world title. You I know? was absolutely going for Ethan Page. I can't believe I said that. Yeah, don't, don't tell Dylan; he'll be been, mad at been us. Been cheering for yeah. Ethan Page to win the world title, yeah. but uh, set up Andrade uh, continued his feud with the House of Black, his singles feud with the House of Black. It'd be interesting if he's going to have a trios feud. It'd be interesting if the trios champions are going to defend their belts ever again. That would be interesting. That would be interesting if we would see some trios matches ever again. I would like to see CMFTR go after them. Yeah, I would like to see some trios matches in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, are, there, are, that is something AEW could use more of is trios matches. Mm-hmm. They have a belt for them. Where are the matches? And for a while they were having matches, but yeah. not with the House of Black. Right. Like, House of Black did that really awesome open house rules, and they did, like, a like a good, like, two or three week series with it. 
And then they just disappeared. And they've had some trios matches, but they've been without the, the champions. And then the champions have had matches, but not all together. So the championships weren't on the line. They've had singles matches. So it just seems odd. I wonder if Malachi Black is, is injured. Because he's the only one that ha- we haven't seen wrestle. Well, it looks like Andrade is going to go up against him. Yeah. yeah. You know, what would be nice is maybe see, see White and Robinson beat FTR in the tag team eliminator match. And then win the tag titles. Mm-hmm. So have heels with the tag titles. And then see CM Punk and FTR go for the trios titles against the House of Black. Wait, can they join the tag eliminator match? I thought it was a blind draw. No, White and Robinson have a tag team eliminator match against FTR next week on Collision. Oh, oh, oh I see what you're saying. I thought you meant I thought you meant they were joining the tournament. No, they have a match. Yeah, no, they have no, a tag yeah, team yeah, eliminator yeah, match. So right. if they yeah. win, they mm-hmm. get a title shot. So let's see. Let's see them win, get their title shot, win the tag titles, and that frees up FTR mm-hmm. and, to go with CM Punk, go after the trios belts against the House of Black. And then the blind tag tournament winner would, would face go with face Robinson White. and yeah. White. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I could be cool with that. That's that's what I would like to see personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, real realistically, that's what I'd like like to see. Honestly, what I'd like to see is the Lucha Brothers and El Hijo del Vikingo team up and take on the House of Black mm-hmm. and win the trio's titles. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But I don't think that's going to happen, so... Well, they're still the Ring of Honor tag champs, I believe. Yeah, so well, they can have two belts. They yeah, deserve that's it. that's true. That's true. They've Why had not? two belts before. Yeah. And El Hijo del Vikingo deserves, like, all, Every belt all the ever belts. Made. So, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um... But yeah, good show. I felt I felt like moved some things along. Certainly moved the tournament along. Um, it played to Canada quite a bit. Um, man, Canada didn't play back. They were the crowd. I, mm-hmm. I hate to keep harping on it, but th- the crowd just was terrible. They were mm-hmm. they weren't dead, but they were close. Yeah, to dead. They were very close to dead. I mean, just not not a good crowd at all. Uh, good show, not a good crowd. So, when can they hear from us again? So, the next time you will hear from us, I'm trying to think when it'll be. It'll be Thursday. Yeah, it'll be, yeah, it'll be Thursday for our AEW Dynamite uh, wrap-up. Uh, you'll hear from us before then, though, certainly. Uh, we will have some YouTube things out before then, so watch us. Watch for us on YouTube. We'll have some mm-hmm. YouTube content out before Thursday, and also I have been twitching AEW Fight Forever, the new video game. I've been twitching that pretty regularly, and I will be on Twitch. Uh, no bones about wrestling is my handle. You can subscribe on Twitch and get notifications when I'm when I come online. Uh, I'll be twitching that pretty regularly. Um, So look for us there. Wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe to us so you don't miss any. Uh, Also, please rate us. Rate us five bones, five stars, whatever they will let you rate us. Give us five or ten. Give us the highest, please, because that's how we find new listeners. And... uh, then we can all talk about wrestling together online and have a nice little community together. Um, also, subscribe on YouTube because we don't put out, uh, we don't have a schedule for when we release things on YouTube. So that way you'll get notifications when new stuff comes out since it's not regularly scheduled like our podcast. Yeah. So, folks, thank you for listening. And as Mick Foley would say, have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>